So I escaped the boot, you munchkin. You didn't have to actually kidnap me, but so I am in a car right now. I'm in a Porsche Taycan, which is a pretty extravagantly exciting electric vehicle. Now I've ridden a lot of electric motorbikes. The Energica Eva Rabella RS is a particular one that I'm mad excited about. Uh, you can see my review. That was like 0 to 60 in 2.3 seconds. This is also a ridiculous acceleration and torque, and so it's a whole new experience being an electric car. But this video is actually going to give you some life hacks on how to find really good places to go anywhere in the world, whether you're in a car, on a motorcycle, walking, cycling, it's a really clever way to find places to fill your belly with good stuff and get your head on an amazing pillow. So stay tuned. So this is Rocky Monster, my husband. Uh, he's also known as Alex. You haven't seen him very much recently, but don't worry, he's always around behind the scenes and yeah, it's an amazing support. We are off for a four day adventure in North Wales, basically trying to give me a little bit of a break, a little bit of time off the motorcycle. And in doing that, I thought it was a really great way to give you some tips about traveling and it will definitely help you on your moto trips. So stay tuned. Right now, we're heading across Wales. Rocked up at our hotel. We are plugging the beast in for charge, and hopefully, that should go green dot 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 if it's charging right. Might have to hit something on the wall, but an absolutely stunning hotel that we have found with electric charging for the wagon. Tick, tick, tick so far. We've settled into our room. We've just got changed to go for dinner. Aha! I'm in my cowboy boots. Alex is in his. Does that count as a cowboy shirt? We're in the engine room. How cool is that? Yeah, it's pretty cool. I wonder what happened. This has got so much history. Anyway, we've got our homework for having it dinner because we're going to work out what we're going to do tomorrow. And this little guy here is a very good way to find cool stuff. And then we're going to walk to the car, which is at the top of the hill on charge. romance in the back yes it's um, i'd say it's embarrassing but actually it's quite cute <laughs> and yeah. we are on the way to catch sunset We've come up to the Great Orm for sunset and the skies around us. It's just stunning. Yeah. There are a good few people up here because it is that beautiful. But look at those views. This is one of the reasons why you travel and the roads that you could do to get here on a motorbike would be a lot of fun. Seats. What's that shadowy bit in the distance? I think, Vanessa, that might be the Isle of Man. Nah, no way. No way. <laughs> what has happened? What the sun has been spoken through? Was, was the fact that I made a Lion King reference that what killed you? <laughs> there was a Lion King reference. <laughs> what was the Lion King reference? Simba. Just can't get the friend. Simba. Oh. See that dark, shadowy bit over there? Oh, everything the light touches. Never go there. <laughs> everything the light touches is yours. Yeah, that's it's your kingdom. It. What about that dark, shadowy bit over there? Focus, we're going to watch the sunset now. It, yeah. I'll show you the other man. So, ball of burning sunshine. Welcome to 
whales. There's a goat on the side of the road. And that one's in his garden. Oh, they're eating his bush. The goats are legit eating that man's bush. How are they so pretty? Hi. Oh, <laughs> I just got a whiff of the goats. Yeah. Fragrant. So if you come to North Wales, you can see really pretty goats that stink. Let's keep moving. Get revved at by a little. There's a, there's a pack, there's a mob. Yeah. Gaggle? A mob of goats. School? What are a mob of goats called? A school of goats. <laughs> no, it's not school, goat. Herd. You've got to let me know in the comments if you know what a group of goats is called. I don't think it's a herd of goats. It doesn't just sort of sound natural. morning of our trip away and we've already had some food but I promised in this video to talk about how you can find good places to go when you're out on your motorbike trips or generally in life and a, there's a resource that I found which is the Michelin Guide app now it's completely free so I'm not trying to get you to sign up for some paid thing but so often when you go to a restaurant you'll be stood there looking at Google Maps or TripAdvisor and it's really hard to pick somewhere to go you're going to get a consistent standard so the Michelin Guide isn't just about really expensive incredible top-end cuisine with stars it's also about quality consistency and the sort of restaurant that Michelin will go you know what if you're on this street and you've got 10 choices pick that one it's kind of like a, a trusted standard so anyway we've got the app on uh, Rocky Monster's phone and you can look at a map, hone in on where you are and look at different restaurants that are up for options. So at the moment we are at Brian Williams, this place, having some breakfast and a tea and coffee. And that's how we're going to be finding places to eat, stops, places to stop for lunch and a coffee, etc. over our four days in North Wales, because we don't know the area at all. Now the exciting thing about it is that this app is global. So anywhere in the world you can go and find Michelin Recommended restaurants and if you didn't know there is actually a link between Michelin and Tyres they're the same company I'm guessing you need same that. family yeah yeah, yeah same family so yeah we're enjoying a cup of tea and then we're gonna sit and have a look at this book which feels really old school I've actually got a book I don't know when I last picked up a book it's a novelty yeah sometimes it's quite nice to have something physical to look through and there's pictures and information and this thing is a, another global thing. There's one in all over the world. And it gives you top places to go. So we're going to try and navigate. Where are we? Wales. We're in Wales. That was a good accent. 558. And then we're going to try and find some stuff to do today. Okay, so we've got an introduction. There are many traditional Welsh icons. The male voice choirs. Rugby, coal pits, slate mines, medieval castles, now I'm listening, Snowdon, which is of course one of the highest peaks in the UK, and of course, sheep, which still outnumber people. There are more sheep in Wales than people, love it. In recent times, many new kind of icons have been added to the updated Wales offering to the world. Outstanding national museums and stunning new buildings that interpret past industries, the striking new Welsh Senate Parliament building, I'm not sure I pronounced that right. Okay, highlights. The Brave Miners Underground Tour, a Big Pit Museum. Are we near that? The Gower Peninsula, we're not near that. Carfron Castle, Snowdon. I think we should do Snowdon because if we go to Snowdon, we can find you some really, really good motorcycle riding roads. It's valid. So, stand up paddling board. Stand up paddling board. Snowdon. Snowdon. And a castle. So, let's find a castle. I just ripped the book. This is how not used to books I am. I just ripped the page. I'm looking at castles. Do you remember the castle we went to in Ireland? We got locked in. Yeah, yeah, I, I do. I do remember the night we almost spent a whole night in a castle. You gonna tell the story? Don't be the last visitors in a castle, because you risk getting locked in. <laughs> like, we were generally up on the, I don't know, the third story in this turret and we just saw this car drive away and we thought there was only one car in the car park when we got here who's here now and we clambered all the way back down this castle and the the fortress gates had been shut and we were locked in the castle it was actually really scary and i don't know if you 
realise that castles are designed so that you can't get in. That means that you can't get out. We like wandered around for half an hour trying to find a place that we could climb out without certain death. And then we ended up just going to the really highest point of the turret and just standing there waiting to hopefully see a car or someone come past. And maybe, what, another 10, 15 minutes later, a runner went past and we were on the top of the castle screaming, going, help, help. And thankfully, they were a local and knew the key holder. And I don't know, 20 minutes later, gates got opened. We were in there for a while, yeah, weren't we? we were pretty fortunate to get out that night. We could have died in a castle. So yeah, what's the lesson? Use the missing green guide. <laughs> No, don't be the last person in a castle. <laughs> What's the lesson? The guide won't stop you getting locked in. It's not magic, although you could probably hit someone with it. It's quite big. I see we've got train lines in here. Okay, can you decide what we're going to have? Yeah, breakfast time. Okay, we've got the, the car, we've got a beach, and in the back of the car, we have the socks. Uh, sorry, Porsche and Michelin. I am a girl on a bike, and I like doing really fun stuff, so you can give me a really fancy car. I'm gonna find a way to put something adventurous inside it. Uh, so I've got socks in the back. They're gonna be inflated, and we're gonna go out there. There we go, we are. We are off. Cool, we're, we're off. Racky Monster, you're so fast. Hee hee. So, I also have a trick to find off road trails to ride when you're on your adventures in the UK. So, stay tuned. But I'm going to go stand up paddle boarding right now. Ah! to Conefron Castle, which is very exciting. Apparently it's got epic ocean views and stuff. So while I'm driving along, I thought it was probably worth telling you about an app that I've discovered that helps you find green roads for off-road motorcycling. Now this one, unfortunately, is only relevant for people in the UK, but the TRF, which is the Trail Riders Federation, have established a database in the UK of all of the byways, council roads, permissive tracks, etc. So basically green roads, non-tarmac roads. And in this app, which is free and you can download it, you can then find legal places to take your motorcycle off-road in the UK. It's worth noting that the TRF is actually a, an association that you can join. There's a subscription that you can members fee pay for every year. And while you can access the database for free, the TRF have probably spent about 10 million in the last few years fighting to keep the green roads open because there is a lot of fun sponges in the world that want to reduce the ability for people to take their motorcycle off-road on all of these green roads. So if you were wanting to join, it would help the longevity of off-road motorcycling in the UK. Now, outside of the UK, I have absolutely no idea what clever apps there are out there. I think OS maps are always a great option. But that is my tip on how to find off-road riding legally in the UK and 
please do ride respectively, stay legal, slow down, be courteous to horse riders, be extra friendly to the fun spun walkers who always think they have more authority than us motorbikes to be out there and hopefully we can continue to enjoy some cool off-roading legally into the future. For now though, it's castle time! Whoop, whoop. Glenarvan Castle, 1090. This thing has been standing since. That is really old, like really old. Welcome to Glenarvan Castle. I have just learned a random fact. So there is no V in the Welsh alphabet. And I was like, well, what would my name be? Pretty much you change the V for an F, so I'd be Vanessa. <laughs> We're going in the castle. Wow! Wow! Huh. What do you reckon, Rocky Monster? I'm sure I'll spot Mount Snowden, but I think it is like Snowden. Out of view. So Snowden would be that way? Yeah. Snowden is one of the highest peaks in the UK. Second. Ooh, second highest, there you go. Okay, we're, we're taking guesses to, as to what this sign means. Let me know in the comments what it means. And also if you have any questions. This is a very random video, I realise that. It's got moto relevance, so hopefully you're enjoying it. And uh, hopefully you can please tick the bell so you get notifications of future videos. And let me know any questions, any thoughts in the comments. What is this room? It looks like a bum. I don't know what they are. There aren't many castles in the world that you can legit climb around and explore. This place is well worth a visit. It is epically cool. Tray that way. Dead end. <gasps> Dead end. I think we have to go out this way. So you can climb that tower, that tower, that tower, that tower, and that tower. dinner at the Jackdaw Michelin recommended restaurant. It's gonna be good. This has to be one of the most beautiful historic towns in Great Britain. Where are we again? Conway. We're That's boring yawning. Him. We're boring him. He's yawning it's to sleep. Bedtime. But it's Conway. Like, look, look, it's just wall. Castle walls, and the whole town is built within castle walls. Castle walls. So, the town that this restaurant is in is a walled, gated castle, and the entrance to the Jackdaw restaurant is up this tiny staircase. You almost question whether it's actually here. <laughs> it gets more mysterious down, <laughs> down a corridor. <laughs> Sea 
that was the most divine meal possible. I think it was about nine tasting courses or something. Super, super yummy. And this is what I mean by the fact that it's a whole kind of town village inside a castle. And this is just right on our doorstep here in Great Britain and North Wales. Amazing. We're having a super chilled morning in the hotel room, which has a lovely sofa. So we found the hotel room using the Michelin Guide app as well. It's probably worth mentioning that. And the Vanessa bomb has happened over there. I can guarantee none of that stuff on the floor is Rocky Monsters. He is currently walking around in his kex boxes. Morning. <laughs> I did that on purpose because it really embarrassed him. But the hotel that we picked, I filtered in the search to have a spa and so many people comment that I never stop. So right now I'm just proving that I've stopped, got a cup of tea and we're going to go and sit in a sauna, maybe a hot tub before going off on an adventure today. Made it to the spa. You're going fishing. Are you saying I look like I'm wearing a fishing net? Oh, you're a cheeky one, Mr. Ruck. We are back on the road. We are off to find some epic riding roads for you to do in the Snowdonia National Park. We lasted about 30 minutes in the spa, which I'd say is pretty good going for us. We're not, yeah. really, we're not very good at stopping and sitting still. So this is Rocky Monster. Loads of you often ask about my better half, where he is, what he does. So I thought I'd give him a quiz as we drive along. He doesn't know what the questions are, by the way. So what's your name? Alex. How old are you? Six. He's not giving anything away. What do you do for a living? Engineer, Royal Air Force. <laughs> he works on aircraft. Um, okay, what do you think to me riding motorcycles? What do I think to you? I think it's a great way to spend your free time. Yeah, it's a good way to stay fit, stay motivated. I feel like that's a really PC answer. Okay, what do you reckon to the fact that I'm away quite a lot and I'm on the road? I'm trying to ask questions that you guys often ask me. It means I've got no trade assist on all my DIY projects. Oh, so you miss me on DIY? Yeah. He just said he missed me on camera. I got that on camera, everyone. How did you get into motorbikes? I got into motorcycles at the age of 15. My uncle, he emigrated out to Australia and he left me with his Greaves 250 Challenger, which had been sat outside my granddad's garage for about three or four decades. So I set to, stripped it down, rebuilt the, the English motocross bike with my dad over probably about 18 months and rebuilt it to showroom condition. It kept me fit at a really young age because I actually pushed that bike further than I ever rode it because it was so unreliable. But it was a really good insight into mechanics, motorcycles, and yeah, I'm, I'm pretty grateful for that. Yeah. co-ed is pretty spectacular and there are loads of coffee shops so particularly important for GS riders. Just pulled over in a very rainy roundabout, no just pulled over in a very rainy lay-by. If you can even hear me in the wind, is why it is well worth coming to North Wales and Snowdonia. And that road was amazing. In this weather, it's very hard to do it justice. I can't put a drone up or anything. But, oh, okay, rate that road out of 10. The first bit of all the rocks. Oh, the first bit's stunning. It's like a 9.5 out of 10. 9.5. Nine, nine, nine and a half out of 10 road. Bruh. There's an A470 road, which is meant to be really, really good as well. Well worth looking up. It's 
probably worth giving you a couple of stats about this car. So this is a Porsche Taycan 4S. It apparently is no longer in production. It's 525 horsepower, has roughly 250 mile range, which is what we've been getting. Charging time is going to completely vary based on what amp you've got. So if you're looking at your home amp, which could be anywhere from 10 to 20 amps, you're looking or even as low as 10 amps, you're looking upwards of 22 to 36 hours for a full charge. If you're going for the supercharge, fast charge things that you get at some of the kind of electric vehicle networks, you're going to get from maybe 40% to 90% in about an hour. We've just been plugging in overnight at our hotel and it's given us enough juice for the day. We're not doing one 250 miles in a day and getting on it really well. My first time in electric vehicle as a four wheel vehicle, on a motorbike, that torque that you get from the electric motor output is just ridiculous acceleration. And that's exactly what you're getting with this. I think it's 4.1 seconds naught to 60. So when you put your foot down, you're like, Wee! and that is the squeal of you excited, but also the sound of the electric motor. It's effortless to drive, crazy light steering, super smooth acceleration, lovely controls, all the in, in sort of car, car play, etc. It's absolutely beautiful to drive. It makes driving very, very easy and effortless. I do find though, you lose a bit of the soul for not having gears. I really like that grunt of like, boom, boom, shifting gear. And you don't get that on this. So... I miss gears. I almost feel like we need electric vehicles with gears. Maybe that's going to be something of the future. Rocky Monster has just got us a parking ticket. So he's going to put it in. Well done. Um, I think I'm going to move it because that car is very close. Sure. So I'm just going to move to another bay and then we're going to have a wandy around this town, which has the most gorgeous river. You're about to head into another restaurant and I'm gonna sign out on this video now. I'm Vanessa Wright the Gun on a Bike. Let me know if you've got any questions, any comments. How do you find great places to go? So recap of the apps that you've got to download. The TRF app so that you can get the green roads. The Michelin guide app so you can find amazing restaurants and hotels. And then also, what's the third one? I might have to watch my own video. There's another one. Hotels, restaurants, roads. Maybe that's it. Oh yeah, two of the apps are one app. Anyway, hopefully you've enjoyed it. It's well worth exploring what is on your doorstep here in Wales, not that far from home. And there's absolutely incredible roads, places to go. I've had a great time driving this and uh, a massive thanks to Mitchell in the UK for trusting me with an absolute weapon of a car.